Well, from yesterday's talk, I said I'd unpack it a bit more about the research that's been done looking at um, the impacts of irrigation with on fish passage. I just want to acknowledge that the work that I'm presenting today is really not mine, but the fish mortality work has been done by a colleague, Dr. Lee Baumgartner at Charles State University, and the sense of fish work that I'll be presenting it's actually been done by Brett Fluger, a student of mine, which I was, I was very pleased to hear yesterday that had his PhD accepted. Probably not so pleased to learn about it on Facebook, but <laughs> bloody millennials. <laughs> um, we all know where the Murray-Darling Basin is, that's where the focus of this research is. Well, look at that. So that, the number of barriers we have in, in my state alone, in New South Wales, looks like someone's dropped their skittles on, on the map. There's a lot, lot of them. They're all different size structures. Two in, I would say though that um, I made this point yesterday that when we're looking at restoring fish passage, we have traditionally focused on upstream passage. But we're really, the penny's really dropped for us in, in the last decade that we also need to to look after fish in their downstream migration. You know we have a lot of species in the basin that migrate downstream at different, different life stages, from eggs, larvae, up to juveniles and adults. So that was the focus of on this research. We know that we've got a lot of these type of irrigation structures out there, so these undershot sluice gates um, and these fixed crest overshot gates. Um, what we've seen from, there's quite a, quite a good body of evidence now to, to show that we actually get better fish survival when discharging them over these overshot gates than these undershot gates. Uh, some of the earliest work was just a, a real little pilot study that Lee did at the back of the fishery centre. Um, it was handy because he had a good source of, um, of larvae and looking at Murray Cod and Golden Perch over a little sort of half metre structure. Um, I just wanted to point out those, those species themselves in Australia are of high recreational value. You can see here that comparing under to over, the results were pretty stark. So we got close to 100% mortality that they observed in Murray Cod and high mortalities of golden perch larvae when going under even that really small structure. So. The next question was asked, what, what happens with bigger structures, bigger discharge, what happens um, a lot over a larger range of species and, um, and um, small, bodied, small bodied fish and different life stages. So that was the, the question that was asked and um, so Lee took his experiments to Bow Reynolds Weir, not far from the fishery centre. It had a three metre internal weir, it was a fish lock. So, Basically, could run the same sort of overshot versus undershot experiment. Um, did a lot more with looking at varying discharge and tail water depth, which I won't go into a huge amount of detail. I don't have time. This is a pretty busy um, slide, but this is one of the um, one of the operating conditions. So uh, I, um, this was low discharge into low tail water. Um, we've got golden perch, Murray cod, silver perch and small body fish. We're looking at larvae, juvenile adults of each of those species. Green is overshot, blue is undershot. Again, confirmation of these high levels of, of larval mortality, high levels in undershot and overshot. Interestingly enough, with the juveniles, um, we when I say we, I said Lee. Lee was able to observe um, higher, actually higher mortality rates, um, sometimes with the overshot structure than the undershot structure. <coughs> Small body fish behaved a lot like um, like the early life stages of these large body fish and, and generally did not do very well when discharged under compared to over. Uh, just a quick point in that higher discharge and shallower tail water tended to be worse. So you can see here. This is our high discharge compared to low discharge, generally high mortality rates um, at, at, um, at the high discharges. And when we're looking at going from the sort of deeper tail water to shallower tail water, again a, a, a general trend for increasing mortality in shallower tail water. So the question being what's what hydraulic conditions are causing uh, 
these differences. Uh, the early work looked at doing some CFD modelling. Uh, you can hear this is pressure under, there was a rapid uh, drop in pressure under the gate uh, as um, you had an increase in pressure build up behind the gate and that's then released and the acceleration of water also creates a drop in pressure. If you have a look here, this is, there's actually a, a high pressure zone here, the impact zone, as you go over the gate. Um, I touched on this technology, sensor fish, that we've been using quite extensively now. Uh, there's sensors autonomous, we can release them and measure around um, pressure acceleration, rotation, orientation. From that we can, uh, we can really look at the three main sort of impacts for fish injury and mortality, that's rapid decompression, elevated fluid shear and strike. Um, Brett did a direct comparison at a, at a smallish structure, um, you know, at a similar discharge overshot versus undershot. Um, also put the sensors through Yarrawonga at a 10 metre structure, um, undershot and compared it to the turbine. Um, I presented, um, oh no, sorry, this is different. So what we saw from the, the small overshot structure, just a slight blip increase in pressure as the, as the sensors went over, nothing major. Um, when you look at the undershot, compared to the undershot, you can see you, as the fish dive to death, increase in pressure and then that rapid decompression under the gate. Um, slightly negative, not much, as the water accelerated. Um, really, the undershot structure at Yarrawonga was pretty similar, the high discharge structure, just the fish went to a deeper, um, deeper part of, um, obviously, deep depth before they, they went out, so that potential for decompression for a depth acclimated fish was larger. Compare that just to Yarrawonga turbine, just to give you context, and here you can see where the real issues are with respect to turbines compared to weirs, comes in this rapid decompression of marrow trauma where you get these negative pressures below surface. So that just is basically shows what I just said, you can get a higher um, potential for pressure decrease at the turbine compared to the, um, the undershot and overshot structures. This is what I, I put this plot up yesterday. So this is um, just an example of some of the laboratory work we did by putting fish through barotrauma chambers and we can see that we had a nice clear threshold for injury for juvenile Murray cod that once they exceeded an 80% reduction in pressure we got um, significant swim bladder ruptures observed. There were species differences and that tended to happen a lot earlier or at lower pressure decreases for, uh, for silver perch. Um, larvae were pretty robust to decompression. So to put that into context of what we just ran through with uh, the weir evaluation, we can see that the collagen creek overshot and undershot are really not entering into any, any sort of territory where we'd see significant uh, injury from, from decompression. Yarrawonga undershot maybe a little bit of um, potential for barotrauma, small levels for silver perch. But again, nothing like you can see the potential for um, sort of damage of a species like silver perch at, at a structure like the Yarrawonga turbine. But when we have a look at shear, shear effects, so we can see here that we, we looked at slights, we were able to measure slight and mid um, shear events. So when we say slight and mid, these are based on um, associations at Daniel Deng in, Daniel Deng in the Pacific Northwest did in associating um, the, the G-forces measured with, um, with injury rates in seven small, so that's sort of the best, the best um, surrogate we've got so far. But you can see that here, high discharge obviously at higher shear levels or more frequently observed shear levels than the, the smaller discharge and the shot and overshot. But as I mentioned yesterday, these little fellas, eggs and larvae, are really um, can't tolerate even low levels of shear. So this, this still creates a big issue for these, these guys. Strike was um, commonly observed in really high G-force at, um, at all these structures. Um, the reason we believe that is um, that um, the water was discharging into shallow water. There was often these energy dissipators or big con concrete blocks downstream of the structures. Um, and in the case of Yarrawonga, it was actually discharging straight onto the concrete apron or the, or the spillway. So it's not unusual when they're larger fish to, to see these sort of strike injuries as 
fish hit those downstream structures. So what can we gather from all this? Well, we, we know that we've got high mortality of those really early life stage and, and small bodied fish and it's higher and under shot weirs. Um, we can get physical injuries of, of um, larger fish, juveniles and adults, at, at both structures. Um, we think that shear and strike are the main causes of those injuries and not rapid decompression, which tends to be a bigger issue at hydropower turbines than it does at irrigation structures. We know also that shallow and tar water and high discharge and um, things just basically putting the river downstream in the tar water can, can make these issues worse. But with all this, there's a huge opportunity. So this is Yalapool uh, Wetland Regulator. Um, that was recently upgraded. It was an older undershot structure. This is what it looks like now. So this is best practice that we use in Australia. We've probably built um, over 60 of these structures now. Uh, we generally, uh, we've got a fishway for upstream passage, we've got overshot structures. These are excavated down to create really deep um, plunge pools for fish to go into. Um, and obviously this acts as downstream passage and an attraction flow for the fishway. Uh, we're now seeing this information spread throughout the region. Then we're um, over in Southeast Asia, we're working on a project in the Mekong where we've um, upgraded um, some of these old ageing undershot structures with more, what we believe to be more fish friendly um, overshot um, lay flat gates and we're, we're conducting um, testing with the guys over there. But yeah, looking at they're investing a huge amount of money, um, a lot of donor money going to upgrade their, their river infrastructure over there. So um, making sure they do that in a fish friendly way is, is important to us. So, i just like to, again, thanks Charles, Charles State University who funded my trip over here today and, um, and the partners that were involved in that, that research. Thank you.